Now we've had a look around the observatory and had a great time. But why did we feel like it was important to make the journey all the way to London's only planetarium? Imad, uh, we've seen the planetarium show. It was brilliant. We had a look around. We've spoken to a lot of people. But maybe can you tell us a little bit more about the Islamic side of things and how it links back to you know the planetarium time space and obviously Ramadan as well? Absolutely. So if we just begin, there is a huge link between Islam and astronomy. And I think that's very unique amongst the world religions. Our prayer times are determined by the position of the sun in the sky, five times a day. And our fasting, and in fact, every month, is determined by the sighting of the moon. And maybe not so much today, but in the past, certainly. And it's even recorded um, in the Islamic sources of the Quran and the Hadith literature that Muslims were from the beginning using stars to navigate but also to find Qibla and naturally as the world of Islam expanded and we had Muslims living all the way from Spain to India and China questions started to emerge how do we uh, determine the time for prayer how do we uh, find the Qibla when we're living in Spain or China and what happened is an explosion if you like in the interest of astronomy and some of the um, most amazing astronomers in all of humanity emerged from the very early periods of Islam say from the 8th century onwards right into the medieval period and the discoveries that they made and the advancements that they made in astronomy are still uh, used today and we still build upon them today. You know you mentioned the, the fact that there were you know astronomers Muslim astronomers who played a pivotal role can you maybe share some examples of, of sure. Muslim astronomers there were so many, but maybe I'll share with you some of my favorites. My personal favorite is an astronomer called Al-Biruni. And he wasn't just an astronomer, he was an explorer. He was very interested in world religions. He, he traveled to India he, and he discussed Hinduism and Buddhism. But one thing about him was he was an incredible astronomer. And Al-Biruni, um, I think it was in the ninth century. I have to check the century actually, but Al-Biruni he worked out the circumference of the Earth to 0.3% accuracy. That's within 16.8 kilometers. Wow. What's incredible about this is he calculated this at a time when uh, people in other parts of the world didn't even know that the world was spherical. Another astronomer who's a real favorite astronomer of mine, he's actually a polymath, he's a poet. His name is Omar Khayyam. And Omar Khayyam developed a solar calendar called the Jalali calendar. And it's a solar calendar, but it uses stars as well. And it's more accurate than the Gregorian calendar that we use today. So with uh, Omar Khayyam's calendar, he loses a day about once every 5,000 years. Now, as you know, in our Gregorian calendar, we correct for a day every four years in a leap year, because every four years we lose uh, a day. But every 3,000 years or so, we correct for another day as well. So these are two of some of my favorite um, Muslim astronomers. So let's bring it back to Ramadan. Why is it that, you know, Ramadan for people even within the same country um, can start the day before, the day after? And then ultimately, why is it that as Muslims, we don't have a united Eid day a lot of the time? That's a fantastic question. And in order to understand that question, we need to understand how the Islamic calendar works. So a month in the Islamic calendar or the length of a month in the Islamic calendar is how long it takes for the moon to complete all of its phases. So one new crescent moon to the next new crescent moon. And that actually takes around 29.5 days. Now, we can't have a month which is, of course, 29.5 days. That doesn't make sense. So the Muslims average it out. So across a year, we'll have around half the years of 29 day months. And the rest of the year will have months of 30 days. And we determine how long a month is by looking for the moon on the 29th of that lunar month. And if we see the moon on the 29th, it means the month we were in had 29 days. And if we don't see the moon, we round up to 30 days. Now, different parts of the world will see the moon on different dates. It's perfectly normal, natural and scientific, that on a given month, for example, India might see the moon on a Monday, and then we might see the moon in the UK on a Tuesday. And for that reason, across the world, it's normal that Ramadan and Eid will have different dates. 
I used to grow up remembering that we used to phone up my family uh, in Bangladesh and they'll be doing Eid a day after us. And that felt strange, but actually it's very normal and natural for that to happen. So that's why Muslims in different countries have different dates and some countries have different ways of determining their calendar. As for us here in the UK, when the uh, majority of us, like myself, the uh, majority of Muslims in the UK come from a migrant background. And as part of my PhD research, I've discovered that when they first came to the UK, they did, like they did in their own countries, go out and look for the moon. Ah. And when they went to look for the moon, they were faced with what we can see here today, very cloudy weather. And they tried and they struggled to actually see the moon. And I've read some very charming letters that those Muslims sent um, to India saying, we can't see the moon in this country, what should we do? And they said, well, one of the solutions that were offered was to outsource your moon sighting to a different country. And now what we have here in the UK is the majority of Muslims, they outsource their moon sighting, if you like, to a different country. Some mosques follow country A, some mosques follow country B, some mosques follow country C, and so on. And so the reason we have split dates in the UK is because every different mosque follows a different country. And as long as we are following different countries in the UK, then of course we won't have a united calendar in the UK. And our proposal from New Crescent Society is to say, well, hold on, can we see the moon here in the UK? And our modest proposal is, actually we can. We've been looking now for the last eight years and we have found it to be cloudy, but when we work together, we can see the moon. Sometimes it's cloudy here in Greenwich, like it kind of is today. But if I was to go to Birmingham or to Glasgow or to Cardiff or Cornwall, where we do have moon sighters, it might be clear. And in this way, every month when we work together, we do see the moon and we can have a perfectly viable Sunnah, traditional Islamic calendar here in the UK as well. And I've got just uh, one, one final question. Growing up, I never really learned about this. Um, and it's only as I got older that I was learning about, you know, Muslim astronomers and the impact that Muslim astronomers had, and even in philosophy yeah. and uh, ethics, etc. What is it that specifically madrasas can do to make sure that our young people are learning about the impact that Muslims or prominent Muslims have had on things so important like time and, and, and space, etc. I think you're doing it. You're doing it right now at the Islam channel. You're doing it with a show like this. We're trying to do it here in our own way in the Planetarium show. And this Planetarium show is one of the most uh, popular shows across all of the shows at the Observatory. We've sold out every single show for the last seven years. So there's a great thirst for it but it's up to us as a community to do the research and provide the educational materials, whether online or in person, for the next generation to learn from. Uh, and last thing, is there a message that you'd like to give to our viewers at Islam Channel, um, maybe about Ramadan, maybe about the work that you do, and, and any of the final thoughts? The message I would like to give is there is something special in this religion that asked us to connect to Allah's creation, to the sun for prayer times, to the moon for the calendar month. And if we look to the Quran, constantly Allah is reminding us to look at his creation and reflect on that. Because when we connect ourselves to the creation of Allah, we are actually connecting to ourselves and back to Allah again. And I would hope to convey to everybody in this modern age, when we're looking at our phone and looking at the screen, ironically, maybe you're looking at me right now on a screen, to remember to connect directly to the nature that Allah has created. I'm so proud that New Crescent Society and the Royal Observatory Greenwich have been holding an annual live stream for Ramadan or for Eid where we go out and look for the crescent moon. And this is because uh, it's an incredible experience, but also it's because, as you know, we don't have a united calendar in the UK. And I find it so incredibly symbolic to work with the observatory because here in the observatory, right here, this is the meridian line, Greenwich is a place where time finds consensus. So what better organization for us Muslims to work with in finding our own consensus about how to manage our own calendar here in the UK?